Part two. So the test statistic is used to find what is called a p-value. A p-value or a probability value is the probability of getting a value of the test statistic that is at least as extreme as the one representing the sample data, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Basically, it's looking at what's the probability our test statistic is likely. <clears throat> so we use the test statistic to find the p-value. The critical region or rejection region is the set of all values of the test statistic that cause us to reject the null hypothesis. So to find p-values, it's important to take note of the tails in a distribution. Determinations of p-values and critical values, which we'll talk about momentarily, are affected by whether a critical region is in two tails, the left tail, or the right tail. Is it correctly is it is important to correctly identify a hypothesis as being two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed. So how do you know? Well, when your null hypothesis is not equal to, that means you have a two-tailed test. So the critical region is in two tails, and the p-value is the sum of the area of the two tails. When you have a left-tailed test, well, that's when the null hypothesis is less than less than is left tailed. So the critical region is your left tail and the p-value is the area of that left tail. And then your test statistic will be what separates that critical region from the rest of the graph. The right tail test is whenever your alternative hypothesis is greater than and the p-value is the area of that right tail. All right, so in Google Sheets, we'll literally go to the Compute tab, and we'll deal with the normal section to find the area of that region under the curve, whether it's left tail, right tail, or both tails. <clears throat> the level of significance denoted by alpha, remember that's your significance level, is the probability that the test statistic will fall in the critical region when the null hypothesis is actually true. So we'll always assume alpha is 0 0.05 if no level of significance is given. So what happens is we compare the p-value to this level of significance and instantly we know whether or not to reject or fail to reject, meaning keep, the null hypothesis. So here's the decision-making criteria. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, alpha is the limbo bar, we want the p-value less, we reject the null hypothesis. So by weeding out the null hypothesis, it gives the possibility that the alternative hypothesis is potentially true. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we cannot say anything about the alternative. We're stuck with the null. All right, so keep in mind p-value is a probability and proportion is the percentage of a population that has a certain characteristic. <clears throat> Let's practice finding a p-value. So find the p-value for a test statistic of z equals 1.60. Determine the conclusion. All right, so draw your visual. So this is the same example. Remember what our hypotheses are. So we have p equals 0.5, and we have p is greater than 0.5. <clears throat> so in our bell curve, this is a standard normal curve. We're dealing with z-scores, so the mean is 0. Where is 1.6? Somewhere to the right is 0. So I want to find the area to the right of 1.60. This is a right-tailed test, so that my rejection region should be the right tail. The right tail should be what I shade. So... I want to know what is the p-value. <clears throat> so your job is to go to Google Sheets and go to the Compute tab and then go to the Normal region. For z, mu is 0, sigma is 1. Lower bound, where does the shading start? 1.60, once again using the visuals, very helpful. Where does the shading stop? Well, at infinity, so you just write six nines. <clears throat> so let's find that p-value. Let's find that p-value. 0, 1, 1.6, and six nines. 
To find the p-value from scratch from the test statistic, we go to the Compute tab to the normal region. Make sure you have 0 and 1 typed in from you and Sigma. Our lower bound is going to be our test statistic, 1.60, and our upper bound is going to be 6 nines. And you have a p-value of 0 0.0548. Usually p-values are rounded to four decimal places. 0 0.0548. Alright, so we get 0 0.0548. Four, eight. <clears throat> so let's compare that to alpha. We'll assume alpha is 0 0.05. Is the p-value less than greater than alpha? Well, it's greater than. So since we're not less than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject H0. Let's talk about critical value now. So one way to actually run your hypothesis test is to calculate the test statistic, find the p-value, compare it to alpha. That's the p-value approach, which is what we'll use most of this class. But there's also a critical value approach. A critical value is any value which separates the critical region from the values of the test statistic that do not lead the rejection of the null hypothesis. It depends on the level of significance alpha. So critical value is basically that cutoff where you have test statistics that reject the null or fail to reject the null. And we'll still use the Compute tab in Google Sheets, and we'll actually use the area to the left portion of the normal region. So we're finding a data value, we're finding a value along the x-axis, we're finding a critical value, so we're using area to the left. So here's the decision criteria when you use a critical value method. If the test statistic falls within the critical region, we reject the null hypothesis. If the test statistic does not fall within the critical region, or the rejection region as we call it, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's find the critical values for the gender selection method and let's determine the conclusion. So let's look. Alpha is 0 0.05. We always use a level of significance of 0 0.05 if they don't give us one. <clears throat> so what type of test is this? Left-tailed, two-tailed, or rat-tailed? Well, you can look at the fact that you have greater than for your alternative hypothesis, so this is a right-tailed test. You are looking for the value, the critical value, CV, critical value, that separates this rejection region that I've shaded from the rest of the bell curve. And the area of that rejection region is going to be alpha, always. The area of that shaded region, when you do critical value methods, is always alpha, 0 0.05. So whenever you go to Google Sheets, <clears throat> you're dealing with z-scores, so mu is 0, sigma is 1. What is area to the left? Well, if the area to the right is 0 0.05, area to the left is 1 minus that. Look at your picture. Use your picture. All right, so my critical value, let's use Google Sheets. Area to the left is 0 0.95, 0 0.95. Area to the left is 0.95. What is the critical value? 1.64, 1.64. So we get 1.64. So we have 1.64, but what was our test statistic? Well, that was 1.6. Where does 1.6 lie? Does it lie within the shaded rejection region, or does it lie just outside? Well, guess what? 1.6 is not in the critical region or the rejection region. That means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis because our test statistic is not in that critical region. It's very important you draw the picture and have this visual.
So you have to write a formal conclusion for your hypothesis test. And how you craft your conclusion is that it's always in terms of the claim. You always write your conclusion in terms of the claim. However, based on whether you reject or fail to reject H0, it's going to impact how your statement's written. And based on if your claim is the null or alternative also affects it. So first you determine, did I reject the null hypothesis or did I fail to reject it? Well, if you reject the null, the null hypothesis and the original claim does not include equality, then you have a statement form of there is sufficient evidence to, su to support the claim that blah, 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 blah. If you reject the null hypothesis and the original claim includes equality, so that means the original claim is the null, you say there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that blank. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis and the original claim does not include equality, remember that's the claims H1, then you write your statement. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis and the original claim includes equality, meaning it's the null hypothesis, you write your statement. So you always write your statement in terms of the claim. To use this table, follow the format for the conclusion based on what your conditions are. So write a conclusion for the gender selection method that with the gender selection method, the proportion of girls is greater than 50%. Use both the p-value and the critical value method. <clears throat> so as a little recap here, when I do the p-value method, I received a p-value of 0 0.0548. I'll give this a little heading here. And then my alpha was 0.05. So we compared the two, we compared the p-value to alpha, and we determined it was greater than. So that meant we failed to reject H0. <clears throat> All right, and then there was the critical value method, a less commonly used method. And for that, we said, okay, the test statistic that we calculated was actually going to be 1.6. And then our critical value was equal to 1.64. <clears throat> All right, so since, since the test statistic was less than the critical value, remember our picture, this makes it easier to see. We had a rejection region in the right tail because this was a greater than test. It was a right tail test. We said 164 was the cutoff. Since 1.6 is not in that region, we fail to reject H0. So that being said, because, remember our hypotheses, We had proportion was equal to 0.5. We had proportion was greater than 0.5. And remember, our claim was the alternative. So we failed to reject H0, and our claim was the alternative hypothesis. It did not contain equality. So we used the following statement. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that with the gender selection method, the proportion of girls is greater than 50%. So because we could not fail to reject Sorry, because we could not reject the null hypothesis, we failed to reject it. We cannot say anything about the alternative. There's no evidence to say anything about it. You can't fail. If you can't reject the null hypothesis, if you can't scratch out the null hypothesis, there's no way you can say anything about the alternative. In a hypothesis test, we assume the null hypothesis is always true unless evidence shows otherwise. So fail to reject says more correctly that the available evidence is not strong enough to reject the null hypothesis. We don't always, we don't just say the word accept. Although the two in common language, fail to reject, accept, may mean the same thing. In statistics, it's proper to say fail to reject. Otherwise, you'll make the mathematicians or statisticians angry. You should always, in a formal setting, say fail to reject. Psychologically, though, if you want to think accept, that's fine with me. Just don't tell anyone. 
All right, when you perform a hypothesis test, you also have the possibility of performing an error. There could be an error in your results. Not a mathematical calculation error, but an actual error just because statistics is not always right. It's correct a certain number of times, but not always. So if you were to fail to reject the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis is actually the true one, that's called a type 2 error. If you were to reject the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is actually true, so it's like cleaning out the fridge and you had good food in there, but you threw it away. That's a type 1 error. So in the context of this test, let's identify what would be a type 1 error and what would be a type 2 error. <clears throat> All right, so remember what type 1 is. So a type 1 error was... If we were to reject H naught, but it was actually true. So we were to strike out the null hypothesis, but it was actually true. So we would say a type 1 error would be we would conclude the proportion of girls is greater than 0.5 when it really isn't, when it is actually 0.5. And then there's the type 2 error. For a type 2 error, we would fail to reject H0 when indeed h1 is true. <clears throat> so in this case we would literally conclude the proportion of girls is equal to 0.5 and treatment has no effect when it really is greater than 0.5. So our type 2 error is looking at, hey, this treatment was not effective when it actually was. That's your type 2 error. And we don't really focus on error too much in this course. It's just important to know that hypothesis test can have errors. And you're like, well, how can I make sure there's not any error? Well, it also depends on your level of significance alpha that you pick. Your level of significance alpha can reduce one type of error, but it can increase the other. So you got to kind of pick this happy medium when you run your tests. But enough of that, enough of error, enough of the introduction to hypothesis testing. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.